I'm Bill Jones and welcome to Vipe TV, a show that highlights local athletes, their schools and their communities. On today's show, we recap the final weekend of boys basketball. There were some great games played at the state tournament by North Texas teams. We've got the highlights. Plus, be careful what you say. The recent girls basketball tournament has created a little media storm after one local coach made an unusual promise. The state hockey finals were played last week. Both teams were from the area, and we have highlights for you. And our resident expert, David McNabb, returns for the ever-popular recruiting segment. He has the latest information to share with you. The high school basketball season is now officially over, but not without a spectacular finale. There were six teams representing the DFW area in the state tournament down in Austin last weekend. In Class 5A, it was Flower Mound Marcus and Garland Lakeview Centennial. In 4A, Dallas Kimball and Fort Worth Arlington Heights. A. Maceo Smith of Dallas advanced in Class 3A, while Melissa represented the area in Class 2A. What a fantastic year for Flower Mound Marcus. They finished first and undefeated in District 8-5A. Had a great run through the early part of the tournament. They played the state semifinal game against Fort Bend Hightower, but the Marauders were just too much for the Hurricanes, winning 53-41. Known for its defense, Coach Danny Henderson's team held Hightower to just 35% shooting. Garland's Lakeview Centennial also had a banner year. They were first and undefeated in their league, District 10-5A. Their semifinal game was against San Antonio Taft. Lakeview came out strong, led throughout the game, had a 17-point halftime lead, won the game by 10, all behind some solid shooting, 60% from the field and 60% from three-point land as well. So those games set up an all-North Texas final between Marcus and Lakeview, the top teams in the state. Marcus had not lost a game since December 4th. Lakeview's last loss was back on November 9th. It was a battle of titans, and it did not disappoint. And talk, uh, joining us to talk about the excitement is Tim Polzer, editor-in-chief for Byte Magazine. Tim, let's get right to the uh, first half highlights and what a game this was and what a start to this game it was for uh, Flower Mound Marcus. Again, a team known for its defense and they came out playing defense in the first half. In fact, they held Lakeview, a team that averages nearly 80 points a game to just nine first half points. And of course, Marcus Smart leading the way. Well, that's what, what the, one of the storylines people may have missed in this 5A battle was state final was that these are two of the best defensive teams in the state. And I think you see that storyline all the way. Every classification defense really, really was prominent at the state tournament this year. What a great move by Marcus Smart there. The spin move to the hoop. And as you can see, a lot of uh, Marcus fans making their way down to Austin. It was a 29-9 lead for the Marauders of Marcus at halftime. And Lakeview only scored two points in the second quarter of this game. It was in the second quarter when Marcus really took over. And you see the selfishness there of Marcus Smart as well. Really a team effort for Flower Mound Marcus as they built that huge 20-point halftime. Lead. We've talked about Marcus's depth all year long. They have role players besides Marcus Smart, Phil Forte, uh, and those role players really come to prominence when a, when a team like Lakeview tries to break them down or, or really double-team Marcus or Forte. And, and uh, Marcus's role players really came through for him. All right. If you stop watching the game at halftime, then you missed a lot, though, because the second half, here came Lakeview Centennial back in this one and they were led by a couple of uh, future D1 players Chris Jones who is headed to the University of North Texas with a steal and goes the distance distance and Todrick Gocher who is headed to uh, Texas Tech what a comeback for Lakeview it's such a it's such a just a compliment for that team uh, the Tony Malden the way that he's coached them what team in the state in the big spotlight you're down so far so far behind but you come back in the, in the you didn't give up at halftime you came back and really made a game of it and you see them forcing turnovers. I think the big key for Lakeview was they finally scored a basket and they were able to start a full court pressing and that caused all the turnovers. I think you're right. I mean, that is a key to the full court press, but man, they, they really put their head down and uh, and got it done. They, they caused a lot of turnovers for Marcus uncharacteristically. I think Coach Danny Henderson said they had 22 turnovers, which hey, I think a season high before that was 14. So to win that game <laughs> with that many turnovers, I mean, it shows you how good both teams were. And Lakeview came back, had a 36 6-31 lead. Let's pick it up now in the final minutes of the game because it did go down to the wire and you knew Marcus would need to rely on Marcus Smart and he took over down the stretch to the middle there. He scored. Marcus led by four at 40-36. to 36. Chris Jones to Cameron
Cameron Leonard for Lakeview cut the lead to two points at that point. After two missed free throws, Lakeview would have one more chance. Down two points, less than 10 seconds to play in the game, and Chris Jones with the drive, but the ball goes in and out, and Marcus holds on to win the game 40-38. to Most athletic play of the game right there by Marcus Smart as they win. Flower Mound Marcus wins its first boys basketball state championship. Coach, just tell us about your emotions there in the closing moments. Uh, <laughs> words really can't aptly describe. Uh, I, I, I was so locked into what was going on, I, I couldn't uh, take time to think about winning or, or losing. It's just uh, stop them on the next possession, stop them on the next possession. Have you ever seen a tougher full court pressure defense? No, so that's the best defensive pressing team I've ever pre uh, faced by far. Uh, Tony Malden is a coaching legend, and he's he's made his legend by pressing like that. And, uh, uh, we were just very, very fortunate to, to come out on top. Uh, as you know, we was here last year uh, with a great group of guys last year. Unfortunately, we didn't come out like we wanted to last year and win this thing. But they gave us experience to come back. They gave us the drive to want it and want to win it this year. You had 16 points and 11 rebounds, Marcus. How do you anticipate being in the right place at the right time? It's just a matter of want to. Player with the biggest heart. I go out to everything. Uh, you know, I just wanted it more. This group, Lakeview Centennial, uh, their, their group, great, great group of players here. Guys, uh, I couldn't ask for a better game, and I just, we just wanted it more. Only a junior and about uh, three of his uh, other starters on the uh, Marcus team also coming back next year. Yeah, I mean, the, you should see them back. They should be the favorite for a state title. I'd love to see those two teams play a three or four or five game series. would be great. Yeah, best of seven. Yeah. How about that? All right, now to Class 4A where North Texas was represented by two teams as well. Arlington Heights from Fort Worth and the Kimball Knights from Dallas. Arlington Heights had a perfect 16-0 record in District 6-4A. They had a great run through the playoffs to get to Austin, beating Boswell some. Southwest Ryan and the Colony along the way. But that takes us to the semifinal game in Austin against Lamarck, the second place team from District 24 4A. And it was also a football player for Arlington Heights, Marquise Jackson, leading the way early on in this one as uh, Arlington Heights actually fell behind Lamarck in the first half and they were trying to come back behind Jackson. A couple of hoops from him. Uh, but in the end, Lamarck was just a little too tough for uh, Arlington Heights in this one. A terrific season for the Yellow Jackets of Arlington Heights. They fell 72 to 61, the final score. But it was a great year, not only for Arlington Heights, but also from Trimble Tech. Fort Worth ISD showed up well in basketball this year. They sure did. And you saw Arlington Heights. It was another another uh, case of defense. They ran into a Lamarck team that played a, a, a pressure defense similar to Houston Yates the last couple of years, and and they just couldn't get untracked. Yep. And uh, you know Arlington. Heights Heights, uh, their coach uh, formerly played at Dunbar. He had state tournament experience and uh, it just a, a great event for the whole Arlington Heights community in their first trip to state and boys basketball. Absolutely. I mean, they've been there with baseball. They've been deep in the playoffs with football. So it's good to see that other program get going. And, and like you said, another great year for Fort Worth ISD. And so Lamarck uh, won that game, went on to play Dallas Kimball in the finals. Kimball, the winner of District 11 for a they had a few major challenges during the playoffs. They Breeze past Conrad, McKinney, Bastrop, and Lincoln. Very few challenges, really. The closest game was against Woodrow Wilson, a team also ranked in the top 10 in the state. And now to the championship game against Lamarck. And they do have some seniors who are headed to D1 schools, but it was a couple of juniors who came through in a big way for them, including Shannon Lilly, who could not miss. The uh, junior guard was uh, stellar with his outside shooting in this game. And uh, also, Austin Franklin will play football at New Mexico State, gets in on the act as well, as Kimball is able to pull it off. The celebration ensues as it was 78-64. Kimball a winner over Lamarck, so DISD once again comes through with a state champion in Class 4A. They sure did, and, and you know, Kimball's one of those heralded programs around DISD. Uh, that you expect them to make a run almost every year. They got out ahead of, of Lamarck, so they didn't have to face that pressure defense. Like you said, you don't make a basket, then, then you can't run it. So uh, it was just a great all-around year for Kimball. And Jordan Williams headed to North Texas, Jalen Jones to SMU. Coming up next on Vipe TV, we wrap up boys basketball with Class 2A and 3A action from this past week. Plus, you have to be careful what you say. A promise made by a local high school coach will now stay with her forever. 
and a shot you have to see to believe you won't want to miss this as more and more as Bike TV continues. Welcome back to Vibe TV as we cap our season's basketball coverage in Class 3A. DFW is represented in Austin by one team, A. Maceo Smith from District 12 3A in Dallas. This was the first tournament appearance for the team. Smith's playoff run became tough, but they kept advancing with wins over Prosper, Van Alstine, Madison, Lindale, and an overtime win against Argyle in the regional final. And now on to the state semifinal game against Corpus Christi West Oso and A. Maceo Smith fell behind early in this semifinal game, but Micah Cooper trying to bring him back, cut the lead to 25-22 with that hoop in the second quarter. And then in the third, down by eight, Micah Cooper again for A. Maceo Smith, cut the lead to 45-39. West Oso though, led by Raymond Robinson, and uh, Robinson uh, helps West Oso pull away late in this one with the jam there. And Robert Watson as well for the Corpus Christi squad comes through would build a 10 point lead and A. Maceo Smith would wind up falling by 20, 80 to 60 was the uh, final score in the Class 3A state semifinals. And one more game to mention, it was a great season for the Melissa Cardinal. They were first in District 12 2A, and their only loss in the regular season was to a Class 4A team, Dallas Woodrow Wilson. The Cardinal took a 36-1 record to the state semifinal game in Austin against the Tatum Eagles, and it was uh, Tatum able to uh, pull away to win that game over Melissa 70 to 57, but what a season, 36 and 2 for the Cardinal of Melissa. Well, an Irving basketball coach is making good on a promise to her team permanently. Before the season, Coach Susie Oschlegel, or Coach O as the players call her, promised she'd get a tattoo if her MacArthur Lady Cardinals won the state championship. Of course, they did, and Coach O said, she hasn't gotten the ink just yet, but she's not backing down from her promise. The tattoo is supposed to be the team's motto for the season. What was the motto? We end that thing. I'm sorry, we end that thing. I've got the same tattoo myself. Spelled the way you see it on the screen. The coach and players have had a lot of fun with it, but a teacher getting a tattoo of incorrect grammar has caused a little controversy in Irving. We caught up with Coach Olslegel a few days ago. I've never had one, but it's going to be little. I mean, it's, it's not going to be, I'll just say this, I have to keep my promise, and I will keep my promise, and so will Coach Nance, but um, it's for the kids, and it's about the kids, and it's our commitment to them, and uh, we're going to keep our promise, and it's, it's, just, it's just in fun. The uh, story has been picked up by websites, including Yahoo and ESPN. And We've learned Coach O has the support of the school district, regardless of her decision. Congratulations to the Lady Cardinals, a well-deserved title and tattoo. And now, one of those shots that you just have to see to believe. Argyle Liberty Christian played in the TAPS 5A state championship game against Plano's John Paul. Liberty Christian star player Nicole Cornett, daughter of our own Tracy Cornett, was at the free, free throw line as we pick it up and take a look look at what happens. The ball bounces on the front of the rim and keeps bouncing about a dozen more times before finally coming to rest. That is what you call touch on a shot. Liberty Christian did win the game and championship 62 to 58, but what an amazing shot. Biggest hockey game this past week was at the Farmers Branch Star Center. The state tournament varsity gold finals pitting the Plano West Wolves against the South Lake Carroll Dragons. Carroll had won the regular season championship, but Plano West gets hot at just the right time of its season. Tournament time in the finals. They were tied at two when Drew Gannon of Plano West scored the go ahead goal. And then it was time for the celebration after an empty netter made the final score a two goal win for Plano West. Plano West wins four to two winning the best of three series. They are the 2011 Texas Amateur High School Gold State Champs. Both teams have qualified for the high school national championships in Chicago next week. Just guys giving everything they possibly can. They knew everything was on the line and um, you know this is by far our biggest rival and we knew that to, to beat them we would need everybody playing and playing as a team and uh, I couldn't be more proud of the guys. They, they, were, they really deserve it. 
Congratulations to Plano West. And coming up next on Vibe TV, it's time for our show's most popular segment. We're talking recruiting with expert David McNabb. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The March issue of Vibe High School Sports Magazine looks at the area's top baseball and softball players and teams, including three cover portraits specially created by photographer Kurt Nelson. Orthopedic surgeons on the medical staff of Baylor Healthcare System Medical Centers discuss the treatment and prevention of shoulder and elbow injuries, and we break down our updated list of the area's top 2012 football recruits. Pick up your copy of Vibe High School Sports Magazine and visit VibeDFW.com today. for our recruiting update now. With that, we welcome in, as usual, David McNabb, VIPE recruiting expert, author of the weekly McNabb Report. Welcome once again. All right, thanks. All right, before we get into the recruiting, I know a lot of you are asking questions because I was asking the question myself when you saw the no Nicole Cornett free throw attempt in our last segment bounces around. I've never, ever seen a free throw like this that bounces around about a dozen times and then just sits there on the back of the rim. What's your understanding of what the rule is on that? I think it'd be a, a dead ball and the other team would get it unless it was the first of two free throws, then I think she'd get it, a miss. It goes as a missed free throw, it, basically, it would go and as it's a, a dead free ball. Throw. Yeah. yeah, and it'd be, a, it'd be a dead ball. I think it'd be similar if you missed the net, the rim, everything. Yeah, or and you've seen it uh, numerous times where a ball will get lodged between the rim and the backboard. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's actually, actually one bounds. aspect that officials probably don't get enough credit for because they have to know all those one in a million, one in ten million <laughs> kind of scenarios of, well, what do you do? Well, this guy knows every one in a million uh, recruiting scenario there is. Got a little bit, yeah. even though it's spring break, we got a little recruiting news to pass along because a lot of people are wondering about uh, one of those Denton Ryan defensive players. There's about a half dozen that are going to Division One next year, but junior Mario Edwards has made his decision, and the son of former Cowboy Mario Edwards is headed where? Florida State with his dad. He's even going to wear his dad's number 15. Florida State. And of course, his dad played at Florida State. Now, his dad's not going with him. Now, his dad is an assistant coach at Ryan. Well, at least he has one more year to go. I don't know. He may be perusing those Florida high school coaching jobs uh, in 10 years. So uh, there is the answer to uh, that question. Uh, Mario Edwards, number 17, the big defensive end uh, for Denton Ryan headed to uh, Florida State. We showed you some basketball highlights earlier. Let's get into some more of the basketball recruiting. There's a two-sport star at Arlington Heights, Marquise Jackson, who you may have first heard about from David McNabb here on Vibe TV last fall because that's when he got on everybody's radar. And he's decided to go play football at University of Kansas. Yeah, and then it actually will be interesting if Kansas may have an interest in him. Every once in a while, you can get as a, a basketball as player. a basketball player. Maybe they'll go, "Hey, you join us at uh, in December, and you can play a role." I don't know if he'd be a starter, uh, but he'll you know he'll also be a big factor on the football team as well. And my apologies to you, Kansas Jayhawks. It is Kansas. University. Marquise Jackson with 44 <laughs> catches in football averaged 27 yards a catch. You know, you look at all of the uh, wide receivers that were recruited this year, I think Marquise Jackson might have as uh, much a chance at great success at the next level. As the yeah, other. He's, as, he's as acrobatic in the same mold as uh, jo uh, Jackson Shipley. Mm -hmm. You know, when the ball goes up, he has great body awareness. He reaches up and over people. He reaches around them. He can stop. That athleticism that you see in basketball, you can really see when the ball goes up in the air. And, of course, play for Turner Gill, who also is a graduate of Arlington Heights. All right, Dallas Kimball, we showed you they won the state championship in Class 4A. They have several players who are going on to play at the next level, including Jordan Williams, who's going to North Texas, as well as Jalen Jones, who is headed to SMU. Uh, is it Jerrion or Jerrion Henry? I think Transfer. it's Jerrion. Jerrion Henry. Now he's still out there. I mean, he's yeah, he's decided. a senior, and and when the tournament gets through, the you know he'll he'll be recruited, and I think he'll be heavily recruited. He'll end up so too. At, at a school that's got a real chance to make the NCAA tournament. And all right, uh, Dallas Lincoln star LeBrian Nash, the McDonald's All-American, headed to Oklahoma State. What kind of success do you?
expect LeBron Nash to have it the next year. Well, I mean, a lot of people think he could be a one and done kind of kind of player, and he certainly has the physical tools. I mean, LeBron's a, a, a kid that you've heard about since he was in the seventh grade. In fact, he was he was a really big football player as a quarterback. And then he, he really just grew to be too tall. There are six, seven quarterbacks, but six, eight, and six, nine quarterbacks when you're a ninth grader. And I, I think his mom decided, well, let's don't play football because you're probably going to play basketball and let's not risk getting hurt in football. But he was, a, he was a really big prospect in football as well. Well, you can see him just in these highlights right here, and it'll be very interesting to see if he's able to do that type of stuff for Oklahoma State next year. Yeah, I think he'll be an impact player. Oklahoma State lost a lot of players. But but he'll he'll play a lot as a freshman, and then it, it, you know it's whether you have the the physical strength right to to play in the NBA. All right, David McNabb, we appreciate it as usual. And when we return on Vibe TV, we'll tell you about some national rankings and a local coach who is now a national coach of the year. Now for some of the latest news from Vibe.com slash DFW, Lake Lakeview Centennial coach Tony Malden has been named the 2010 National Basketball Coach of the Year by the National Federation of State High School Associations. Three North Texas boys basketball teams are nationally ranked. Flower Mound Marcus ranked number two, Lakeview Centennial 18th, and Class 4A champ Dallas Kimball is 21st. McKinney Boyd's girls soccer team is now ranked second in the nation after winning the District 10 5A title. Coppell has moved up to number 12, Marcus is 14th, and Carroll is 25th. Thanks for joining us this morning. We'll be back next week at 1030 to bring you the best stories in North Texas high school sports. We leave you this morning with another look at that amazing shot by Nicole Cornett of Liberty Christian. It's still not going to fall in the basket. <laughs>